Good morning from the Midwest fans of Rando, and this is Speed Gaming 1, and we're bringing you another race in the Link to the Past Randomizer Casual Boots Tournament 2024. This is a Group AC tiebreaker race for second place. The, uh, the stakes are real simple. Win and you get on to the next level and uh, lose, and sorry, we'll see you next year. Uh, I am Taylor 116 I'll be doing some commentary for you. I'm joined by uh, Matt Sitt, who will be doing more tracking. Uh, we have our racers Kefka and Sten. Um, sorry for the slight delay. We had to get some cropping going, and uh, we're all ready to go, and our runners ready to take off. There's the countdown starting. A little slight delay from what the runners are doing, but uh, yeah, so casual boots. It's, it's kind of like uh, runner's first mode. This is where a lot of uh, runners will cut their teeth. We have a guaranteed standard start. We're going to get uh, guaranteed sword and boots. Oh, and <laughs> as we see uncle leaving the house with a sword, that's going to tell us that the uncle prize also will be a sword. So our runners will have master sword off the start and 300 bucks. That's a pretty good go. So, yeah, we're going to have a starting store, starting boots, uh, guaranteed escape section where we rescue Zelda and get her to the sanctuary just like we did in the, the vanilla game. There's our guaranteed sword. And then after that, it's going to be uh, pretty much a 7 7 defeat Ganon. So both these runners, 3-3 three three in their group, unbreakable tie. So I had to force a second place tiebreaker. Very experienced runners, so look to see some very good execution. Some strong use of dash lines in here to, to get the fastest time possible to get out of this section. Okay, Ether Medallion, not really going to advance anything right now, but it may be good to have later. Both runners just kind of lockstep with one another. That's just the way we want it. Oh, Kefka, be careful. All right, Stan going for the pot slash combo. Kefka with that Master Sword going for two spins. Really had to be careful there. Dying before you get Zelda is pretty tragic. Uh, responding to something in chat, you cannot do Aga before doing the escape. There are some guard placements that are in the way of some certain doors, so you can't get through them. It forces you, um, it bottlenecks you through the escape sequence first. Um, with the mirror... You could mirror as soon as you turn in Zelda, and it will take you back to the front of Escape. Um, then you could go up to Aga that way if you really wanted to. It would not be the first time I've seen that done.
All right, there's the Nikita of the escape. Kind of had to be there at this point with nothing else available. This gets us through the back. There are three items in this back section. Uh, we don't have bombs, but because we have boots, we can just block the wall and get through. Um, and then we'll be to the sanctuary to drop off Zelda, and we'll see where our runners want to go. Nothing really in escape giving a clear indication of anything else to do besides Kakariko. But we'll see if our one of our runners wants to chance the skip. Okay, we're not going to be looking for that. Sure, runners are, are happy to see that. Even with uh, if TR turns out to be a pendant, it's just nice not to have to, to look for that. And that does give us some, you know, some weapon options for potentially an early landmo uh, that might speed that up. I I did commentary for a race last night where ice rod was required and it was on the pedestal. So I'm glad that we're not going to have that problem today. Yep, and not seeing the map had to be in sanctuary. Um, I'm with both of these runners. Even if I had been counting and knew that, I still open that chest. It, it's just a peace of mind thing. All right, map check. Three very basic blue crystals in the light world. So a, a nice light world layout for our dungeons. Yeah, for some of those who were commenting on the, uh, the ice shot on pedestal, go watch the race from last night. Um, oh, I can't remember who. Oh, it was deep fried and Cheffy. It was just all the silly. All right, just more money sitting on the Lumberjack ledge, so not going to be super important for our progression today. All right, there's all our money problems basically for the seed wrapped up. Uh, seed being very generous with its 300s today. Both runners not having much better options. Going to go push the Kid Krico check. Pretty standard. Uh, plenty of options and items to grab in here. That hopefully will help uh, define where we want to go next. Okay. Um, Kate might make Aga a little more viable, but starting with that Master Sword, it doesn't really push the Aga card forward. But may need that for Bumper Lid, so sure, we'll take it. It's a nice safety to have. Going to top off on Bombs. That's uh, really good for Sten. Kefka already had a pretty tall stack, but that'll fill Sten up well. Both runners making really good use of these dash lines, staying really close to one another. We heard you like bombs, so here's some bombs for your bombs. Mo money. More money. Okay, um, Kaker goes so far, kinda sucks. Pearl and Kakariko, so at least something of value out of here. Um, doesn't give us a ton of direction yet. 
But we're working on it. We're getting there. We're, we're grabbing stuff. Sure. I'll give me a. I'll, I'll make the small run back to to the kid for the bottle early. Sure. Yeah, I kind of agree with Kefka here. I think I, I check the race game first. That way I can just save and quit from the kid. And more money. Yeah, basically, Kakariko was just for all the cash. This is where Hyrule stores its money. It's the, it's the banking industry at this point. All right, Kekri could give us some fun things, but not really anything to force the progression. So I would expect our runners probably head to South Shore. Uh, could do the Saha visit, but knowing that Eastern is a crystal, probably waiting on a bow before they head that way. friend if it's not the best item in the game okay for checking the structural integrity of the dam uh still pretty sound so good job Okay, Stan, just grabbing those arrows uh, for safety in case they do find a bow. I thought maybe they were thinking the Agena play. Agena Cave in the desert pretty pretty often can get isolated. Um, having boots makes it a little more uh, attractive, so we've seen a few runners go that way. Uh, <laughs> okay, there's our lamp. So, Aga definitely intensifies, and that hook shot, if we find something like flippers or a hammer or a glove, gets us across the river. So I'm sure that's on our runner's mind now. See Kefka running along the edge of this pit and out the door. I'm sure Stin will do the same. Setting up for that water walk. Um, going to see if they can't just go get Waterfall Fairy on their way to Zora now. Neither of those checks in logic without flippers and then at least a glove for uh, Zora. But having a plethora of money and all the skills, uh, our runners, no problem. We're going to try to finagle this in and see if they can't get something out of it. All right, a little bit of divergence here. So Kefka stored the water walk and then did a splash elite to get into the water. Once they jump down from Hobo, as long as they jump north-south, will maintain their water walk and be able to run into this area. Whereas Sten wanted to keep the water walk and skip the Hobo. Uh, the man on the bridge only having a shield. So, so far, Sten getting the better of the deal so far. Shelver from the Waterfall Ferry, interesting. Could potentially have something we want, but not anything required. Or not anything in logic. Uh, Scamfish doing the things they do. Uh, to answer a question in chat, yes, you can have flippers and store water walk. It's, it's possible. It takes a little bit of funniness with how you jump into the water, but it is doable. All right. 
Staying kind of heading to the only place our runners really have left. Uh, not wanting to check that shovel out of logic. He's going to head over to Saha in the eastern area, which is what I'm guessing. It's probably just going to be something silly like a glove. Oh, even better. That bow, we're going to be able to knock out Eastern in one go. Saha, storing the goods. And Sten, talking to Saha for us, letting us know that Swamp is the green pendant. Alright, gonna both the runners gonna dip into Eastern. The items we found not really giving us a chance to diversify any running, but that's alright. We'll get there soon enough, I'm sure. But yeah, so the with the lamp, everything in this dungeon is in logic, including the boss kill, so we'll see if both of our runners pop some good execution and just rip through this. Three items are gonna have to be some kind of key to the next point. Well, I mean, I guess not. If there's nothing here, we just go to Aga and then push our way into pod. If I'm either of these runners, I'm thinking maybe Glove is what I want to see next because it gives me mountain access. And with that hook shot, we can do a majority of the Light World Mountain to potentially avoid an Aga play. But yeah, if nothing else, then we know that's where we're going. Yeah, book could be an option. Um, it doesn't give us a beatable desert yet, but it would unlock uh, at least something over that way, and it would force Agina, which is getting, which is potentially getting very isolated now. Okay, well, our shovel's on logic now. And that gets us across the river uh, in the Dark World, so we can jump into the river, swim north to the dock, and then use the hookshot to get across the river. So, it, you know, I feel like the play is guaranteed now. Okay, Sten, you were stressing me out there for a minute, man. <laughs> Just sitting on that half heart. Oh, Kafka getting a little trolled by these Igors. All right, nice quick kill there by Sten. Let's see if Kefka can answer. Excellent. Yeah, two great quick kills by both of our runners, lifting up their first crystal. And uh, yeah, it, 
we may see someone want to check Gina in the shovel spot now that both are in logic, but we, I, if I'm these runners, I'm thinking the play is definitely just Aga. All right, Stan, having skipped the band on the bridge, is going to finish that check off now that they have the in logic flippers. Kefka, looks like, yep, they're going to check the shovel now that they have flippers as well. I, I'm not against these plays. Um, something like um, nice shovel dash. I mean, an extra heart makes life better. Um, something like a glove, like I said, opens up the mountain, which may help you avoid the aga play. Yeah, alright, here goes Kefka heading toward Aga 1. We'll see what Stead wants to do. Stan is choosing to check out Agina here. Really, really putting the uh, the screws on this. I'm like, I really don't want to do Aga 1. It's sad and boring. Uh, if this is anything significant, even if it's not something that deters from Aga, this could be something Kefka leads off for quite a bit. Oh, okay. That's pretty huge. Oh my. So yeah, it doesn't deter away like we're still doing Aga here, but on the opposite side, if, if even if Pod's not a crystal, Sten can go right into Pod and beat it, uh, having that hammer, where Kefka will definitely go across the river and just explore the Dark World. Not to mention also for Sten, that's a slightly faster access across the river. We'll not have to swim up, we'll just be able to go up and hit the hammer peg. So Kefka, very great job doing some execution to getting through Aga Tower. And we'll see Stin start doing the same thing. Yeah, it's not impossible. I mean, there are, are things that can pull Kefka back that way. If they find a book and wants to take out Desert, they'll, they'll get over there. There's, But there's a lot they can do in the Dark World without that hammer. Yeah, definitely um, a great heads-up play by Sten, making the the gamble that Agina would have something of value to try to avoid Aga. Um, not the end of the world. This is I mean, there's plenty of race left to go, but yeah, that that's a great call by Sten.
All right, not too bad. I think there was two lightning cycles for Kepka, and we're through. Uh, Stan very much uh, on the on their heels, pushing through some of these terrible. Some of these red guards are just putting the the bricks to Stan here. All right, we got pendant <laughs> pendant skullwoods and thieves town. Everyone's super excited about that. So pot is a crystal. Oh, and Kefka choosing to push into Pod without the hammer. This will be a time loss, unfortunately. Wait. Hold on. Did Kefka not get the flippers? I don't see it on their tracker. Surely they cleared everything out of Eastern. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, that was a scary moment. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're good. Yeah, no. The, sometimes that tracker just eats inputs, man. I was just really worried that they had made the, you know, made the skip of the vanilla binky chest that didn't have flippers, and that would have been the real tragedy. Okay, early big key. So we're bow locked out of here. But not a problem. Our runners have a bow from Saha. And popping through there. I got one fight, no problem. Um, if they do a map check, and I'm sure they will, and see that crystal pod, I have to assume they're heading to pod right away with that hammer. There's the check. Gross another shield. And a small key. Alright, Kefka going to have to do some death warping. Luckily, these red jellies. Oh, there's the heads up. Remembering, I have a fairy. Hold on, let me get rid of that. Good job. Uh, yeah, responding to someone in chat. Uh, the hammer is in Agina. Stinton made the choice to check that, trying to avoid the Agaplay. Whereas uh, Kefka leaned into it very, very hard with uh, Master Sword's lamp, hook, and flippers. Oh, Kiki, you idiot. Alright, both our runners who seem to be afraid to be apart from one another are going to head into pod together. Um, but as far as value, Stin is, I think, going to get a lot more out of this because they'll be able to beat this dungeon. <laughs> Alright, so Kefka finding in the Dark Maze the 20 rupees that replace the boots, so nice boots.
So yeah, it doesn't look like it was a ton of value for Kefka and Pod, unfortunately. Yeah, that, that hammer miss for Kefka is really unfortunate, but I, I I think I would have done the same routing here. And then, especially with knowing I have access across the river, I would immediately be thinking, oh, this is where I need to go. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to have to see where Kefka can fit that in. All right, cape just valuable for the blue boomerang. No one wants that. So Kefka going over to the pendant side of the world. Uh, Skullwoods and Thieves Town both being pendants. So we'll see how much of this they want to dip um, and how much they want to just move on. Kefka doing a great job avoiding that wall master. Trying to get back to the uh, vanilla big key chest. Oh, nice case, Mario. Yes, please. We like the cheat stick. It is a good thing. Yeah, I guess the if if I'm running this for as far as Pendant Thieves Town, it really is what do I find in Vu that gives me something else to do. If I find something like a glove, then I'm I'm not doing much, if anything, in Thieves Town because I'm just gonna go to the mountain instead. Um, if I find a lot of nothing, then well, my progression's got to be somewhere. All right, Stan going in for their Helmet Star fight has to be a little careful. Their heart, heart value just a little bit low. And it looks like our other item in Skullwoods might be buried in the back. Okay, Sten. But, making me nervous. All right, we get through it. Helmets are down. Let's see, anything of value? Nope. Okay, so Pod didn't have much, but it is a crystal kill that Kefka will have to go back and do. Yeah, I feel like Helmosar is one of those bosses that kind of gets taken for granted, but if you're on green mail and relatively low hearts, everything he does is two hearts. It's going to hurt. Okay, if Kakariko had all the money, who has all the hearts? This is silly.
Yeah, great, uh, great point in chat. Stead could have just gone south and grabbed Hype Cave first uh, in the density that it pretends to have. But yeah, it looks like they're going to favor the uh, the north to south wraparound through Vu. All right, that looked like a lot of trash in the front. <laughs> Theme stout. I don't think I think we found what one item, uh, and it was just the green pendant. So our green pendant, Lord. Green Rupee. So Kefka deciding, mm, got to be value here somewhere, right? All right, Sten. Yeah, uh, I think something Smirk said in chat. Sten, seeing that it's pendant Skull Woods, decides, no, no, I'm just going to skip that for now. Doesn't know that Samari is just sitting there. This could be something Kefka kind of needs to uh, potentially get themselves back in this later down the road. Yeah, Green Pendant is sitting in Swamp Palace. We have no real access to that yet. Not without a mirror. Look smart. Go cross them keys. Alright, so Kefka decided to do the entirety of this dungeon looking for some progression. We'll see if Sten just wants to do the front four and bounce. Yeah, there was only one item in the front. We had map compass and big key, so... No gloves, so Kefka's got to do this the long, boring way. Alright, so it looks like the small key for Thieves Town is just buried in the big chest. So Kefka's not going to get burned by that later if there's anything here. But if there's any value, it's it's got to be sitting on... It's got to be sitting on blind. And Sten, only doing the front four and deciding that's enough for me. Uh, and so far, it looks like that's the right call unless blind is really sitting on it. So this is going to be an important, important check for Kafka too. Yeah, reacting to something that's in chat. Um, the blind cannot have the small key, or else it could potentially make it so the dungeon is uncompletable. Uncompletable? I don't know. Um, so we know that the small key has to be locked in the big chest. Okay. Well. <laughs> this seed's got jokes. All right, nice bottle in the dig game. Pretty short dig game. What is that, 10, 11 digs? So we'll take 11 digs for a bottle, sure. But uh, Kefka has to be breathing a small sigh of relief there, thinking, finally, something. As their dark world has been pretty, pretty empty. That could also be good for them. Uh, fluting to the desert uh, to check Agina now. A little more viable once they get that flute activated. But that also is their mountain access. Sten getting ready to approach Hype Cave. If there's nothing in Hype Cave, we can see Sten do a real fast turnaround back to those dungeons in the in the west. All right, good old Johnny Two Bombs. Let's see what Hype Cave pretends to have. Got to be a glove somewhere, right? Nice silvers. Okay, nothing. So, yeah, Sten's got to realize there's got to be something in the West that they need.
So for Kefka, this will be the end of their route where they'll, I'm guessing we'll head right back to Kakarika to activate that flute and then most likely go to the mountain. Sten, unfortunately, has to do this wraparound one more time, uh, but knows this progression has to be in one of these uh, pendant dungeons, so... Luckily, won't leave this for very long. A little bit of a time loss, but it's it's not going to be a backbreaker. Getting forced back in here early. Okay. If <laughs> there was a moment there where I was worried Sten was just going to go back to Thieves Town immediately, um, which would have gotten them a flute, which is great, but it would have really isolated Skull Woods. So yeah, this is great for Sten. We'll be able to catch back up with a couple of things they left behind. Uh, Kefka activating this flute really honestly needs to what needs the flute down to the desert area to check Gina to not isolate this any longer. Um, I would guess, though, we'll just head to the mountain. All right, Sten grabbing their Samaria, probably breathing a small sigh of relief. And yeah, up to the mountain with Kefka. Makes sense. Uh, it's unfortunate, unless the mirror is here, we'll be missing out on doing Hera that the hammer would give them access to. So this is slightly unfortunate. The hammer misses. It's starting to pile up a little bit. Spec rock, nothing. Yeah, so Kepka finally pulled out a glove out of this scene 42 minutes in. Feels a little late for a glove, but we're there. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like that glove might. Mm, it might hurt Kepka a little bit to delay the, the hammer even more. Kepka really needs to pull a book out of Paradox. You know, Mitz and Mir, something. Okay, Mir's a little bit. That gets them Hera now. So they can always wrap around and grab that too. So that's good. Okay, yeah, double glove. There we go. Okay, so that gets them the desert through the mire. Um, and then if Meyer's ether, it also gets them a mire clear as well. Burna and Paradox doesn't really do anything. We have Cape, so Spike Cape was available to at least Sten anyway. Uh, Kefka still needed that hammer. So are we... Yeah, we're... Depending what medallions are for dungeons, we just need the Fire Rod. Yeah, this scene really wanted you to go to the mountain. It just in a really shit way. Crap way. Alright, so Kipka, Spiral Cave. Alright, sure, another bottle. I, I think bottle-wise our runners are pretty square. Yeah, there'll be no fire rods on ped for this scene. Not with Skull Woods being a pendant, sorry. <laughs> Sten tried to lift that rock, realizing, oh yeah, I don't don't have a glove. Alright, nice block skips by Kefka in uh, Super Bunny.
All right, a medallion for TR. I think that was Quake. Uh, so we are on the lookout for a Quake medallion now. All right, Stan forcing their way toward Blind. We'll get that fight soon. We'll be able to pick up their flute. Uh, Kefka gets the... Okay, sword. We'll take it. Well, everyone loves Tempered Sword. It's the the hot new item. Okay, so Hookshot Cave, besides the sword, not a lot of advancement there. Using that mirror to great effect. Gonna head into Hera, get this crystal clear. Sten sees that flute and realizes, ah, there's my progression. See it. I would guess an immediate save and quit and have them wrap around back to Kakariko to activate their flute and head up the mountain. Great hair pot set up by Kefka there. Drop down, grab a... See if they can't find a couple items here and hopefully avoid the basement. Yeah, Stin heads over to activate their flute. Alright, 50-50 whether Moldorm has the last item or not, so... Okay, so Stan making the good choice of just saying, all right, look, at, the globe's going to be somewhere, and there's a lot of mountain to explore. So they're going to come up here as well. It's kind of a great Moldorm fight. Takes down another boss. Uh, has the other items, so he gets to avoid the basement. But also, more importantly, grabs crystal number two. So with that flute, uh, and mitts, and no hammer, I have to assume Kefka's probably going to head for the Desert Mire area, not just for medallion information, but also to knock out Desert. So this is Kefka's best chance to grab this hammer. Alright, and Ether. So we are going to be able to get into Meyer. So this will be a quick double clear for both runners once they get over here. Nothing on the desert ledge, so Kefka gonna go ahead and come in here. Plenty, plenty geared. None of the dungeons uh, would be any kind of problem for our runners at this point. So really, just hoping for that fire rod quake as quick as possible. The mitts and mirror to open up a couple of uh, more long, longer, boring checks. You know, K45, Smith Chain, Graveyard Ledge, King's Tomb. You know, all those unfun things. We can get. We can, no, yeah, we can get into Ice Palace, but we can't do anything in there, because we can't even get out of the first room. Stan grabbing their mirror, gonna grab their mitts up top here. We'll finish clearing all of this. Having the hammer, Stan will be able to do Spike Cave after Hera, if they wish. Could be an interesting uh, item placement that gets left for a long time. It kind of feels like the natural end to their route, considering where they are. Yeah, I thought that was both items. There was one of the big chests, I thought, and one of the right side.
Yeah, Code believes. No, no, no. I'm I'm plenty healthy. I do not need your your partly heart. Okay. All right. Here's Kefka's hammer. They're gonna be very relieved to see this. Um, maybe a little little frustrated because there's things like pod they could have cleared on the first try. Um, but yeah, the, honestly, not super damaging considering you know the theme sound big chest was blocked with or it's small key. Um. So not leaving too much behind, but yeah, definitely a relief to see that. Alright, Stan heading up into here. Gonna get nothing but a crystal out of here, but it is required crystal regardless. As Kefka pushes through to the back to get their line mo fight handled. Different of a setup for Sten, but gets the same same result that they want. Get a nice hair pot. Kefka, three silver arrows, lamb mode down. Oh, okay, there was another item left, and it is the fourth sword. Alright, Kefka. Uh, I would guess it's probably gonna go right into to Meyer here. Has all the tools to, to make Vinny very much a thing of the past very quickly. Alright, into Meyer we go. Stin, yep, another beautiful boss fight. Our, our, both our runners have really excelled at their boss kills here. Uh, even with Stin making, making our hearts skip a little bit with that Helmazar fight. You know, kept it cool, calm, and collected. It's able to, to drop it down, so... Alright, both our runners at three crystals now. I'd expect to see Stin immediately just rush to the Desert Meyer area as well to follow behind Kefka. Might see if they pull Spike Cave here. back across to the Light World Mountain. Oh, okay, it didn't do Spiral Cave. Alright, this might isolate Spike Cave then, because they'd have to go back around if they want it. Um, so, we'll see if they get that or not. Yeah, commenting on something in chat. Yeah, the, the hammer really didn't lock Kefka out of anything, except for having to double dip pod for the Helmosar kill that... Uh, Stin does not have to do. They have already finished that dungeon. So that's the only real time loss here. Um, to complement that, or to counter that, Kefka went into having less you know, availability of what to do. Um, decided to go in and clear Thieves Town on the first try, getting their fluke, where Stin only did the front four and then went to Hype Cave, but with the availability of Dark World Axis, had to reroute all the way back around across the river to get back to Thieves Town for their progression. So, a little bit of time both ways. Mirror shield, yes please. So yeah, there, there's a balance for both of our runners here that's going to be very interesting once we start getting to the end game. Yeah, 
kept already having one item trying to route away from the cutscene chest. Do not disagree. Oh, hello! All right. So avoiding the cutscene chest pays off for Kefka, and they grab the required quake for TR. So where is the fire rod? Yeah, our runner's gonna have to make some choices now because we're kind of down to some really cruddy checks like Smith Chain, Graveyard Ledge, King's Doom. Um, we could see Kefka at this point after Meyer just rush right back to Pod and finish it off. Uh, there is an Iron Up Mom in Helmosaur, and they may think maybe that's the answer and they need the crystal anyway, which I think probably is the right answer here. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's Green Pendant Swamp. Yeah, I feel like uh, in this scenario, I'm, I'm going to do a Smith Chain into Green Pendant Swamp. Um, I'm not a super fan of it in this regard, but it lets you mop up the most in a, a nice, cleaner run. So, yeah, I think that's what I do here. Looks like Stin is going to, yeah, going to route the entire left side. It's going to get the cutscene chest, which is going to be a little bit of a time investment as Kefka. Using the silver arrows and just obliterating Vitreous, down they go. And then going to grab their fourth crystal. Okay, yeah, Kefka gonna go ahead and mop up Pod, get this last crystal. This will bring our runners pretty close to even at this point, because Kefka just has to run to the boss. They've cleared everything else in this dungeon. As Stan is still has to route the rest of the way through Mire and then also beat Desert. So this is gonna give us a real clear indication of where our runners are at, because at this point, basically it's check parity. And as we approach the hour mark and we see our runners going through some stuff we've already seen, uh why not give these runners a follow? Uh, Kefka and Sten racing for their tournament lives in the Casual Boots tourney. Um, good racers have been around for a little bit, so we want to give them a shout out. Say thank you for putting on a show for us. Also want to shout out uh, Matt Sit, our tracker today. Thank you so much for clicking the buttons and doing the hard work, so I don't have to. All right, Chad, I've seen it a little bit, but here, I'll give you the official invitation. This is your moment. This is your time. Where's the fire rod? Tell me. Confess all of your sins to me. Tell me all the bad things that you want to have happen. I'm here. I will be your your sin catcher. Go ahead. Let, let me have it. Let me, let me hear the goodness. I see first check of TR. That's pretty rancid. Uh, I've had scenes where the, the fire rod has been on the laser bridge. It's not impossible. It takes a very specific key layout, but it is definitely a thing. Book and TR leading to tablet fire rod. That's disgusting, and I'm here for it. Uh, purple chest, blah. Very nice turtle runes by Kefka there. Having a, a much stronger sword makes killing those turtles a little bit easier. Oh, Mimic Cave. That's a, that's a good shout. I like that one. I, I guess I'll left side swamp too. 
All right, Kefka using that spin speed setup for their hammer hits, really extending the, the hitbox of that hammer. Going to Al and then takes a hit. Dang it. All right, dueling boss battles here as Kefka keeps trying to take out that mask. Has gold sword, two slashes, and we're done. Just a stand, lines up two shots with silver arrows, and down goes Vitreus. All right, four crystals for Stan and Kefka getting their fifth. They're kind of putting where we're at. So Kefka has a one crystal lead, and that's pretty much the clear of desert. But yeah, it's time to start seeing what Kefka's going to do to try to find this fire rod. Ooh, yeah, fire rod and ice palace if they track down the bombo somewhere. That's a very real possibility. Rule of fire, sure. All right, Kefka, yep, looks like they're thinking, yeah, Smith Chain. Probably, I, I would guess Smith Chain into to Swamp Palace. It's the most direct density, so this makes a lot of sense. Like, I, I feel this play. Yep, Kefka definitely ahead at this point, and I think you can really just tie that to choosing to finish uh, Thieves Town when they were in there and getting that flute and not having to rewrap the world. All right, not Graveyard Ledge. All right, not King's Tomb. Alright, Kefka gonna route the north. Remember, his catfish is a thing, so we're gonna check that out now, too. Catfish, or as I like to call them, my last location. Alright, not having any armor and not having any half magic. Kefka deciding, I'll take a couple blues. Sure, I'm here for this. Safeties are only safeties if you use them. I'm burning some time doing these north checks, not getting any progress. If Sten can avoid those three, um, they'll be pretty much back in lockstep with Kefka. Um, and yeah, so we're going to see what runner wants to do what when it comes to these checks for the fire rod. Another great fight. Sten, three shots, three landmo kills, and we're off to the races. Yeah, the, the Smith Chain play into Green Pendant Swamp Palace is definitely the density play. Like, it is the most items and the most direct route. So, it, it just is a matter of, do I feel like that's the answer, or do I need to do something else, hoping that I can find it in some obscure place where my opponent doesn't look.
All right. Kefka using some good uh, strats and dash techniques. Normally, if you try to dash with the purple chest, it will just stop. It will not follow you. But if you can, you know, take a hit and start dashing while the animation's still going, or if you can hit the hook shot and while you're moving, you know, activate your dash, the purple chest will just follow along like it's supposed to. So yeah, great execution techniques by Kefka there. All right, another little trick by Kefka here. So the, how the flags work when you have the purple chest as a follower is um, it does not check to see if you still have the purple chest until you uh, transition into the light world. So as long as you are right next to <laughs> the locksmith, or Gary as we like to call him, when you transition, the game just assumes you still have the purple chest with you. So as long as you... It, you know, just talk to him to turn it in before anything too important happens. The game's like, yep, you've got the you've got the chest, we're good. And it lets you dash up the speeds around a little bit. Alright, Kefka gonna leave a portal here, gonna zip back to Kakariko, check this powder on Magic Bat. This is a real heads up play. Because being able to flute right back to seven won't have a problem getting right back into the dam for Swap Palace if this is not the answer. Oh, there we go. Kefka using the heads up play of Powder and Purple Chest to run right back to check it. Stan. Oh, Stan. Let's see if they have the same idea. If they're just going to get pulled right into Swamp Palace. No. Yeah, this is real bad for Sten. Kefka, knowing that they're in go mode at this point, is going to blaze through Ice Palace. They will not be checking anything that's not on the way, because outside of armor and half magic, there's nothing they want. So they just need to grab their seven crystals now. Nothing else matters. Yeah, this is this is real unfortunate for Sten. Um, anything they find in here is going to be a distraction. Probably worst case scenario is they find Bombos. Bombos would just lead them into Ice Palace for another full clear of a dungeon they don't have to full clear. So, yeah, Kefka just blazing through Ice Palace, knowing, yep, I'm in go mode. There's nothing here I care about. You know, I just I just want the boss in to go. So those icicles giving a little bit of a problem to Kefka there and, and allowing the uh, the puffs to get out of the corner. But Gold Sword just melts them. Doesn't even matter. Oh, cool. Key. Who cares? We're out of here.
So yeah, kind of a recap stand. Finding that hammer before the required uh, Aga Blade really made it seem like it was going to be an advantage because of its placement. But it, without finding gloves until super late you know, up on the mountain, everything was funneled through the flute in the back of Blind as Blind as Dark World didn't have anything else to speak of. So that, that potential advantage really kind of got washed away by nothing being available. Uh, and Kefka being able to route it in without really missing anything. Um, and yeah, then it just really came down to Flute being on blind and Kefka choosing to finish the Pendant Thieves Town, where Sten was trying to, to play Overworld Density and left it, had to go back for it. Um, really kind of put them behind a little bit, but it, it all came up even when both started doing the Smith Chain within a minute of one another. But instead of going into Swamp, uh, Kefka chose to check the powder while Sten chose the density of Swamp Palace. And yeah, Kefka. Kefka got bailed out and chose right on this one. Kefka into TR. Uh, go voting TR, not really a thing, um, especially with key placement. You're going to get a majority of these items. Basically, you're just hoping to be able to avoid Laser Bridge um, and Lava Chest. Everything else is kind of you're looking for small keys and how they get separated out because of key logic. Nice mushroom. All right, well, Sten getting half magic off Argus is nice, but it's not gonna not gonna help, unfortunately. All right, excellent, Kefka pulling the Mickey out of the, I believe, map chest. In TR means they don't have to do Lava Bridge. We'll just be able to steal the key and move on. Yeah, Sten grabbing that book in Swamp. But what we were talking about earlier, anything they find in Swamp is just going to be a distraction. Yep. And I'm wondering if they're going to take that. <laughs> oh, Kefka. <laughs> Buddy. Uh, yep, yeah, this is what I was afraid of. Finding that Bombos and Swamp as well means they're going to go into Ice Palace looking for Fire Locked Fire. Uh, and this is going to be another full clear of a dungeon that Sten or Kefka was just able to go mode. That's real unfortunate. Swamp having all the hard bait. Yeah, that's that's really rough. That that small palace is just cruel on this one. All right, Kefka gonna go to this pokey, steal this key, and then immediately just leave. What's in the what's sitting in the in the lava chest? We do not care. Getting really trolled by the enemies in this dungeon, though.
I, 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 I get why Stan just pushed it into the in Swamp Palace. It, it made a lot of sense. Um, Kefka just made the heads up play of leaving a portal in front of Swamp. So, nice French vanilla mail. Um, so they left the portal in front at uh, Fleet Spot 7 in front of the dam where they could just go back, uh, get the get the match bat check, and then flute right back and be able to go into Swamp if that wasn't the answer. So a very heads-up uh, play uh, from Kefka, I mean, really is just the turning point here. Kefka having another small key, doesn't even need to look at Laser Bridge, will immediately just go right to the boss. As we see Sten, you know, pushing through the rest of this uh, Ice Palace, trying to find their Fire Rod that unfortunately is not going to be here. Kefka, no half magic, but has plenty of full bottles, uh, filled those up earlier, so not going to be at a risk of running out of magic anytime soon. Alright, trying for some backdoor strats here. Maybe get it, get it, if Trinex decides to... No, whatever, he didn't even move, dude. Um, that's just cheating garbage. Trinex cheating Kefka out of a solid zero cycle there. All right, a spin and two slashes, and we have an exploding stone turtle. Kefka about to get their seventh crystal in chat. I think you know what that means. All right, lifted up the final heart piece, grabbing that crystal. All right, there are 22 checks in the basement of Ganon's Tower that ha may have the big key that lets Kefka finish this game. Where is that big key? Chat, put your numbers in the chat if you want to guess where you think it's going to be. There you go. Sten, they got away from the corner a little bit. Some icicles kind of getting in the way, but able to group them back up, finish them off. Not seeing uh, the reward they're hoping for, though. Just to decide what they want to do next. All right, Kefka, what's your route here? Potential DM route, maybe? Rando Rush? What are we feeling? All right, Sten, looks like they're going to go check the magic bats. Going to get the bad news that they could have had this about 10-ish um, minutes ago. Well, not, maybe not 10, but a while. All right, DM, just having a couple keys. Yeah, we're going to see a DM room from Kefka. So grab the DM room and then head over to the right side. Not in hope room. And yep, there's the go mode for Sten at uh, almost you know, even 120. Now has to get up the mountain to push through TR. But Kefka having a really strong lead. Sten. Sten, what, what are you doing? Alright, well, that's all the keys. Or small keys. And there it is in the compass room. I think with that small key in the compass room, it had to be there. Don't quote me on that. I don't know logic very well. Oh, oh was Sten thinking Skull Woods was the other crystal? No, oh, that must have been it. Well, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, eleven? All right, we have some 11s in chat. Uh, Daisetsu. Yeah, GG is guessing the, the number 11 correctly. All right, the rando part of this race is officially over for Kefka. Now it's just muscle memory. How good is your climb? Uh, if you're looking to shore up your time in the randomizer or speedrunning in general, this is where you can put some time in because once you get here, it's only based on your execution and equipment load. 
So practicing the GT climb, always a good idea. You're going to do it a lot. Most seeds require it. So the seed is not over. Um, goofier things have happened on the GT climb. Um, I've got a league partner that I remember to bring up quite often, mirrored at the very top of GT and had to redo the whole thing. So it, it is possible. But Kafka strong lead as of right now. All right, nice recovery by Kefka. That shot that arrow just a little bit early for that third land mo, but you know, Gold Sword doing Gold Sword work, able to to pick it off and finish it. Really good execution through this GT climb for Kefka. I'm going to stop off, grab this magic. Please be careful. Laser beams, pretty strong. And you're still on green mail, my guy. Yeah, plenty of small keys from the basement, so don't even have to worry about anything that's in the mini helmet room. Like I said, outside of armor or even half magic, there's nothing Kefka could possibly need. And I guarantee you, they don't even need that, so... Missed the block skip. Not a big deal. You're going to have to just walk the rest of the way. All right. Stan already having the big key. Going to grab this pokey key and steal it. And be able just to rush right toward the back. Okay. Solid double from Kefka. Pretty sure that was just a single. Another double. So two one two one maybe. Yeah, that's a good setup. Yeah, there it goes. Two one two one. Great job. So yep, Kafka. Great GT climb. Great execution. Now I'm just gonna go. Handle a pig, and with Gold Sword, shouldn't be a problem. So, Stan choosing not to get the big chest um, is going to have to go to Laser Bridge looking for a key. There's a chance where they could get 4% in here. There's hoping not. Gold Sword just melting cannon, doing the Lord's work here. Quickly on to phase three. Stan? What you looking for? Okay. <laughs> And on to phase four. Oh no, silver is my one true weakness. Maybe a double? No, I'm not even going to try for it. Where, where Kano was pushed up against those torches, a double would have been pretty difficult. One, two. 
Not going to get the triple, but there's four. All right. Assuming that Kefka can conquer the most dangerous bridge in Hyrule, we will have a winner in this race. Get your GGs in chat. And there it is. GGs to Kefka with an official race time .gg time of 1.26.45. We'll take first place in this race and advance on to the next round of the Casual Boots 2024 Challenge or Tournament. GG. Oh, very nice Trinex kill. Does the backdoor strats and gets the uh, spin, spin, slash to finish off Trinex. Great job, Sten. We'll now be picking up their 7th Crystal. And we are joined in the booth by today's winner, Kafka. GG. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, that was. Uh, I was not very confident when I found the, the hammer so late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was kind of the, the big telling point of the first half of this scene was Sten chose to go to Agina, I think yeah. trying to dodge Aga, and got it before the Aga play, so they were able to do Pod in one dip. Luckily, though, Pod had absolutely nothing. No. <laughs> no, no, but. Uh, I had to double dip it anyway because I didn't have the hammer. But I was hammer was bad, but not that bad. I was really afraid it was glove that give total access to the mountain. In fact, and I thought about it after because I was thinking, okay, you need two items to to have a dark world access. So just go do Aga. But if it was glove, you could have a, a lot of uh, checks possible in the mountain. But, well, it worked It worked well. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's what it was, is all I need is one thing to get to the mountain in the density, and maybe I can avoid this, which felt like a possible, you know, a possible play, especially in a mm. race like this that has such high stakes for both yeah. of you. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, luckily, that hammer really didn't lead to anything, and it forced you into the west part of the world to the Pendant Dungeons, where you chose to finish uh, Thieves Town. In, yeah. And Sten just dipped it, and that's the difference. Yeah, um, I, I, I imagine it was it was a possibility, but I, I don't, I didn't want to do all the because I didn't have the hammer and uh, needed to do uh, the full uh, the full circle again back to Sif's Town if there was an item in the back. That's really the, the main reason. So yeah. I, I decided to finish it. <laughs> yeah, and we were commenting on that in the in the during the race too. Is just. It's such a bad Dark World access. If you don't get something, you've got to do this whole loop around the world again. Yeah. That, that's what happened to Sten. Um, yeah. So you kind of had a, a lead at that point. It was hard to tell without the hammer, but once you got through Meyer Desert, you were a, 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 mainly a desert clear ahead. And you did some mm -hmm. North World checks um, looking for the Fire Rod. They didn't. So you both were on the Smith Chain at the same time. Um, I think you got the purple chest when they turned in the smith that's how yeah. close it was um but you had the really good heads up play finding that powder of oh let me leave this portal in front of the dam and kick back to mm -hmm. match Matt just in case and they, exactly yep and that was that was honestly the difference because they chased right into swamp and uh -huh. found so many misleading items they found the book <laughs> they found they found bombos so they went right into ice palace looking for fire locked fire like it was oh, a no. swamp was an absolute tragedy. I can imagine that, yes. But yeah, because because I, I could leave the portal and swamp is uh, a, a flute spot. In fact, I, I thought just go do that. It's quick with the flute. You do it you, and you come back and you can just uh, yeah use the portal again. And uh, very fortunately, it was the the fire rod. Yeah, it was a very heads up play, and it it kind of looked like Stin had a hesitant moment where they were thinking of doing that. And decided, mm -hmm. no, no, seven items in Swamp is the play. And yeah, there was your difference. No. Then, okay. yeah, they did a Hope Room full left route in GT where you made the DM route to uh, to the big key. Mm -hmm. So let's give it a little bit of difference too. But yeah, a very, very strong run on your part. Really good execution. Great dash uh, line. And your, your yeah. boss fights were very much on point. So a really good showing from you. 
Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, there was uh, some uh, mistakes. Uh, <laughs> I did a bad, bad turtle rock again. <laughs> it was the same yesterday. But uh, no, no. Overall, I'm, I was quite uh, quite happy with the execution today. Yeah. Yeah, you should be very happy with your your presentation. It was very well done. Uh, both of you actually had great boss fights and execution too. This really just came down to uh, here's the choice I made, mm. and yours was just right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but, and, and I think one thing that where well, I got very lucky is that the the mirror was in the mountain, so I could I didn't have to go back to the mountain to do era. I could do it in the first trip on, of the mountain uh, without the hammer, and I think that's a, a fortunate item if you leave the hammer uh, at the beginning of the game. Yeah, for for missing the hammer on your first way around, you really got some good benefit of okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that mirror, both gloves being on the mountain really just freed up that mountain trip for you to where you could just keep going and not have to reclimb. Yeah. But so, uh, yeah, happy, this... happy to qualify. <laughs> I thought yeah. I was already qualified. I didn't uh, read the rule correctly because uh, in our head to head with Stan, I, I won the two races already. So I thought that the head to head uh, uh, counted as it does in, in a lot of other tournaments, but I read the, the, the rules again and said, oh no, <laughs> the to head doesn't count. We need to do a tiebreaker. But that was nice. Was happy to play with 10 again. Yeah, the, the tiebreaker rules being a little bit different in this one. So, yeah. But yeah, congratulations. You qualify for brackets. Um, excited to see who you're uh, going to play. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to play. It's. Uh, I think I was... I don't remember if I qualified last year for brackets. I think so. Yeah, I, I, believe, I, I believe that you... Yeah, I believe that you did. Yeah, so uh, I, I maybe sometimes I'm confused with Kabuki and Casual Boots and all the tournaments <laughs> we do every year. But uh, now yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to qualify again and hope to, to yeah to play uh, to play a very good player in the brackets. Yeah, Casual Boots. Uh, the tournament is very well run by the admins, yeah. but also it's it's a great uh, a testing ground to see all the new talent that's in the community and how mm. high the level of play is. Um, for the people we get to hang out with. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and thank you very much uh, for the for the restream. I uh, was very surprised. <laughs> I didn't notice that this morning. I noticed just after my lunch that <laughs> we were restream on speed gaming. I think it's my first time on speed gaming. I was uh, a bit nervous and happy at the same time. Yeah, I was uh, I was taking a walk around town last night looking through the restream options, and I'm like, a tiebreaker race? Well, we got to get that on. <laughs> no, yeah, I was really happy to know that. Yeah, we pretty much covered all the major time zones between you, Stan, and I. So yeah, <laughs> Australia, Europe, and uh, you're in the U.S., I guess. Yeah, I'm in the Midwest of the U.S., so it's uh, <laughs> just about <laughs> ten o'clock in my area. I'm getting ready for late breakfast, and I think y'all are getting ready for dinner. Yeah, but that's uh, that's uh, yeah, that's that's also a good uh, uh, I don't know a good thing about the community. It's really worldwide. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, we've had some really good racers from all over. So, yeah. Stan pushing into Wizard 2 is going to finish this one out. So, we want to make sure to keep encouraging them. And yeah, so uh, you can, you're you happy to stick around and watch the finish of this and chat with Stan for a little bit. Yeah, I, I just put the speed gaming on to look at it. Uh, oh, it's not the one. But yeah, wow. So many people watching. But yeah, that was uh, that was a good race. Uh, that, yeah, that's unfortunate to do deep, to deep swamp, uh, and lucky to to find uh, the fire rod uh, on the on the on the powder. Yeah, and again, the, the, one of the more tragic things about it was finding that bombos in there, just leading them right to Ice Palace. Yeah. Trying to, you know, it's a required crystal. Fire locked fire is a thing. Yeah, it was just the worst case scenario. The stuff they found in there. Yeah, that was really what I was thinking I, uh, when I was uh, uh, Quake. Fire Rod Go Mod, I was really hoping to find Quake first <laughs> because I didn't want to go back to Skullwoods and uh, having the possibility of pedestal uh, uh, in play. And uh, and when I found it, I, I, I really didn't want to find Bombos. I wanted to find the Fire Rod and be sure to, to be in Go Mod uh, uh, already. So it was, uh, it was a bit uh, great and lucky at the same time. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, had you have found that fire rod, it would have opened up a whole another world of where can this be? Yeah, yeah, because if I found fire rod before Quake, uh, I would have 
obviously go to uh, to ice uh, uh, to uh, to um, yes to ice palace and then uh, to skull woods probably maybe try the ped uh, which didn't uh, wasn't very lucky for me the last time I gambled on ped but uh, <laughs> though no I, it was uh, it was great this way. <laughs> All right, Stan pushing through their Aga 2 fight and getting oh ready to drop into Ganon. Oh my timer didn't stop. Okay, I thought it was linked to the, to the race time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the Ganon fight was, uh, was nice. Butter Sword, Silvers. Yeah, you, both of your both, yeah, the swords were kind of hard to miss in this one. You just kind of kept going and you found them all. That uncle having the sword out of the house, you're like, well, guess we're having a master sword right off the top. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I noticed, I noticed the, the sword when he left uh, the house. I was happy about it. I thought, okay, maybe I can do a, a, a sub five uh, escape, but no, no, it didn't happen. I wanted to farm the, the bombs when I saw the, the guards pa price pack. Yeah, and I think you had a couple of guards that kind of got in the way of some of your routes that didn't help much. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on to phase four for Sten. Oh no, Silver's my watch for weakness, yada yada. Goes for the <laughs> double, I think they got it. Sometimes those torches can mess up your doubles. And there it is, four arrows in. Go ahead and get your GG's in chat for Sten. Gonna finish this race up. All right, and there it is with official race time. GG time one thirty eight thirty five. Get those GGs to chat for Sin. We'll see if they want to come chat with us real quick. Yeah, it's late. Very late for him. Yeah, it's very, very late for them. <laughs> okay, looks like they might come over for just a minute. There we go. There we go. GG, Sin. GG. GG. Wow. Let me tell you. This, uh, don't let the, the end time fool you. This race is actually very, very close uh, and had really good divergence in it. You got that hammer before Aga and Kefka did not. Uh, yeah, I think it doesn't help me. <laughs> well, and that was the unfortunate thing. Pod had nothing. Yeah. So all it really bought you was a single dip of Pod, which was great. Like, it really helped, but that gave Kefka more initiative to finish Thieves Town when they were there, and you didn't. Yeah, I was really hoping I wouldn't have to double dip Thieves Town, but <laughs> that was that was not ideal. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, because of the Dark World access, that long like wrap around the world to get back there means you didn't miss Samaria, which was adv advantageous, but it kind of put you behind a little bit. Mm. So then you kind of just followed everything Kefka was doing up through the mountain, Meyer Desert, etc. and so forth, but... Yeah. After that point, you both were looking for the fire rod. Kefka gets a North World Dark, uh, North Dark World checks that you did not. So you both were on the Smith chain at the same time. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> like, he was picking up the purple chest when you were dropping off the Smith. That's how close it was. Mm. Um, but yeah, once they got the powder, they dropped a portal by the dam and kicked back to check the bat. And you're like, well, I'm going to chase density. And unfortunately, Swap had. Uh, just a ton of things for you to chase. Yeah. Yeah, I was considering going back for, like, going back and checking Bat, but I figured, oh, Swamp's got more checks, let's just do that. Yeah, you could see there was just that small bit of hesitation before you went in where you were thinking about it, and we were like, oh, go, do it, do it, do it. Because it would have been a pretty mad race toward the end had you gotten that fire rod. It would have mm. been definitely an execution battle, because I don't think you would have been a minute behind. Damn. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, really, really good race for both of you. Uh, the execution, especially on boss fights for both of you, was really on point. Oh, yeah, the 
check difference is uh, is really huge. Mm. Thirty check, thirty checks. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I decided because I could leave the portal just just in front of swamp. Uh, I decided to to move to to check the the, the powder first. Another dungeon. Uh, I don't know example if I, I found the powder on the tablet next to Era or things like that. I wouldn't have done it, but. Yeah, it was really because I could leave the, the portal just in front of the food spot. Mm. Yeah, so it was a really, really good race. It was just, you know, one unfortunate decision, which wasn't a bad one. It wasn't a bad call. It just, uh, this time, wasn't the right one. Yeah, it really didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, you know, the Bombos that was in there, which led to a full clear of Ice Palace, the book for Bombos tablet. Like, it was just all of these things that just kept pulling you away. Yeah. Then... Uh, Kefka did a DM route to the compass room for the big key. You went hope left. So, I mean, it was just like, man. <laughs> Everything going bad, yeah. So that happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that, that was that was fun having a, another another race, uh, final race. Hope to, to see you again uh, maybe next year or in another tournament. Maybe in the league. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, league, the league is coming soon. Uh, uh that would be fun. Thank you yeah. again, and, and thank you yeah. again for the the you know, scheduling because it was not easy in our group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Scheduling races. laughs> yeah, you guys were pretty spread out as far as time zones. And sorry about the start of the race. Uh, we had to find someone to help do no some problem. cropping. So I'm like, hold on, yeah, guys, I'll get right. you going in a second. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. That was uh, nice to be restreamed. So no, yeah, no, no, no offense taken. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say good luck in the rest of the tourney, Kefka. I mean, you beat me three times. You definitely deserve to progress. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, two dudes, Kefka, who will be advancing onto the bracket stage of Kaz Boots. Stan, unfortunately, losing the tiebreaker. This is kind of the end for you, but uh, hopefully you had a good tourney. You had a good, some good races in there. I did better than last year, so I'll take it. <laughs> That's all right. That's what we want to see. Progress, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And thank you again. Uh, and uh, thank you to all the, the viewers who watch the race uh, at this time of the day uh, for their benefits, uh, mm. early or late. So, all right. I think with that, we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you to both our runners. Please give them a follow. Uh, they were willing to take some time out and give us a great show. We appreciate that. Definitely want to shout out our tracker, Matt Sit. Thank you so much for doing all the hard work so I can just you know, yak at this thing and hey keep an eye on the speed gaming uh, family of channels plenty more randomizer coming up not just in cast boots um cross kings is running main tourneys just around the corner and sgl has been announced so plenty of races to come so once again thanks to our runners thanks speed gaming thanks matt's it and uh, we'll see you all next time bye bye bye